Hi everyone, welcome back to Beginning Symphony 2 Web Development. Today we're going to learn how to install and configure Symphony 2. We'll also take a look at Symphony's directory structure and then start up the app server to make sure everything installed successfully. To begin, let's review some simple course requirements. I'll be assuming that you do already know the basics of PHP and object-oriented PHP. You should be familiar with creating classes, working with a terminal or command line, as well as how to operate your own local development database and web server if you don't prefer to use the built-in one. Now, as for Symfony's requirements, you should have at least PHP version 5.3.3 or higher installed on your machine. You can check your installed PHP version by going to your terminal or command line and using the php-v command. Here, we'll check mine real quick. As you can see, I have PHP 5.5.14 installed. Alternatively, you could create a PHP script and call the PHP info method and then run that on your server to check your PHP version there, as sometimes your terminal and environment PHP versions might be different. So if I just change directories into my sites directory and then list out its contents, you can see that I have this PHP info.php script. I'm just going to open this up into Sublime. Let's reposition this here. And now inside, you can see that I have a single line calling that PHP info method. If I visit this page in the browser, just going to switch into Firefox. Here you can see I'm at localhost php info.php. And you can see that it lists out that same PHP version that we saw in my terminal, PHP version 5.5.14. Now you should also have a database of some sort in order to store your web application's data in. You can use whatever DB you prefer. I'll be using MySQL for this course and PHP my admin to manage it. Feel free to use your own DB manager as well. Now you'll also need to have Composer, a PHP package manager, which makes managing your app's dependencies as well as installing Symfony itself a breeze. Uh, you can check if you have Composer installed just by going into your terminal and using the composer-v command. And if you get a list of options, you'll know that you have it. Now, I won't be covering installing Composer as it does vary for Unix and Windows-based machines, but you can visit their website here. It's getcomposer.org, and you can get information on downloading it and installing it as well as documentation. And now that we have everything, let's install Symfony. So inside your terminal or command line, first navigate to wherever you like to store your web applications. I use my sites directory. I'm already inside here. And now we can run the following command to download Symfony 2. We'll use composer create hyphen project symphony forward slash framework hyphen standard hyphen edition. And now before hitting enter, we need to give our project a name. We'll be working on building a bookkeeping application throughout this course, so I'm just going to name it Bookkeeper. Now, after the name, make sure to put a forward slash there. We need to tell it which version of Symfony to install. We do that by enclosing the version number in single quotes and prefixing the version with a tilde. So that'll look like this, tilde 2.5, close quote. And now we just hit enter to install it. And this will take a bit to install, so just sit back and relax until it's finished. OK, Symfony is just about finished installing. We now need to answer a few questions about our configuration. You can see we have this little wizard here popping up in the terminal. First, it asks if we want to install the Acme Demo Bundle, which just includes some demo code for you to mess around with when first getting to know Symfony 2. Uh, we won't be needing this, so I'm just going to enter N to skip it. Now it's asking for our database information. I'm just going to use the default PDO MySQL. I'll also leave the host as localhost. I'll leave the port as null. Now we need to enter in the name of the database that we'll be using. I'm just going to name mine bookkeeper and hit enter. And now for the database user, I'll leave it as root and I'll leave the password as null. Now for the mailer configuration, I'm just going to hit enter five times to leave all of this at its default. So one, two, three, four, five. Now we need to enter in a secret token. 
I'm just going to press in some random characters here and hit enter. And then finally hit enter three more times so that we can see the debug toolbar and set the debug redirects. So one, two, three. And after all of that, Symphony 2 is installed. Now make sure to change directories into your new Bookkeeper app. So CD Bookkeeper. And now if you'd like to double check that your local development machine meets all of Symphony 2's requirements, you can run the following command, php app slash check dot php. And if you get green like you see here on my screen, you're good to go. Let's now open up our Bookkeeper project into our favorite editor so that we can get a better understanding of Symphony 2's directory structure. I'm going to be using Sublime, so I'll open this up. There we go. And we're not going to need that PHP info script anymore, so I'll get rid of that one. All right, here's our Bookkeeper project. And within our project, we have several folders to give our application a good structure for housing our code and keeping different parts of the app separate. We have four main folders. The first one is the app folder, and this holds the configuration information for our application. This holds files like our app kernel file, which is the main config file. You'll see that right here. Now, this file is also used for registering our app's bundles, and bundles are what we use to house specific features of our application in. And we'll learn more about bundles in the next lesson. Now, this app folder also contains settings for security, routing, log files, console programs, and more. Let's close this one up. Now, the next important folder is the source folder here. This folder holds all of our bundles, which contain our main application PHP code. This is where we'll spend most of our time developing our application. But for now, it's empty as we have no bundles in our application. All we have is a .ht access file. Let's close the source folder. After source, we have the vendor folder, which we can use to house any third-party dependencies that our app needs, such as Composer, Doctrine, Twig, and the Symphony framework itself, among others. Let's close up vendor. And now lastly, we have the web folder, which houses our publicly accessible files like styling, images, JavaScript, and it also acts as our app's web root. So that wraps up the Symphony 2 directory structure. If you've used other frameworks in the past, this probably looks familiar to you. If not, don't worry, it will as we proceed through the course. So we're now at a point where we can make sure that our Symphony 2 application did install successfully and that we can run it in the browser. Let's start our server up using the console. So I'm going to switch back into my terminal and let's run the following command php app slash console server colon run. There we go. And this starts up our application and makes it available at localhost port 8000. So let's visit this page. I'll go back into Firefox and we can visit localhost port 8000. Okay, we get a big old error here, just as expected. Since we didn't install the Symphony Acme demo bundle when we installed Symphony itself, we have no bundle and thus we have no routes. So we get this no route found. But our app is working. And just by seeing this page, along with the styling and the toolbar at the bottom here, we know that Symphony is running successfully. So that's it for this lesson. Next time on Beginning Symphony 2 Web Development, we're going to cover a Symphony 2 quick start in which we'll go over the basic building blocks of creating a Hello World Symphony 2 app, including bundles, routing, controllers, and templates. We won't be covering the database aspect just yet, but we will in the entities lesson. So I'll see you there, and thanks for watching.